look, I get it. It's January. There's so many other things I could be talking about. I'm probably the only person who really cares enough to talk about this. And I understand that so many people have ripped into the show. So many people have made videos about it. It literally was a meme that like everyone was talking about the show and everyone was ripping into the show. But just hear me out, okay? I know this has been overdone, but just hear me out. I promise I have a good reason to do this, okay? Ready? Here's my reason. It's just way too fun to rip into this show. <laughs> So in the process of working on the next Rise and Fall at the time of this video being out, I remember being up at 6am pushing myself to get the next sections of the script done, typing things, making sure that things are accurate, watching the episodes, making sure that I get any references right, making sure that I get the characters names right or the episode titles right. All of this so that the rest of the team that works on the Rise and Fall can do their part in making it a great video. It was then when Adult Swim turns into Cartoon Network again. And that's when I heard this. Feel the magic. Hear the roar! Thunder cats are loose! Thunder, 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 thunder cats! Thunder, 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 thunder cats! Thunder cats! And it dawned on me that there was a crossover that went completely under my radar. And I figured since I was late on making a video, in fact, I've been late on making every single video I've ever made on my channel except for one. And that was the stop motion SpongeBob Halloween special. And I'll always be proud of that. But I don't even think I would be angry at the show or the episode because it's so hard to be angry at something that wants you to do that and be exactly like how people depicted in this episode are. At first, I didn't want to pick this up, but I kept watching it, you know, just getting further and further into the episode and really sinking my teeth into what this crossover was about. In fact, ironically, the last time that I covered this show was when it did a pretty decent good crossover with another reboot that was critically mauled over the internet. At most, I'm actually apathetic to the show, and the only thing that's interesting about this is that they're still bitter. Can you believe it, Titans? Our favorite cartoon is back! I can't wait to see how this new version will expand its mythos. I have never seen these thunder and lightning cats. I do hope they are as life-changing as you all speak. So before I go any further, let's bring everyone up to speed. On February 26, 2015, Teen Titans Go! would premiere Let's Get Serious, a season 2 episode that focuses on Robin wanting to be portrayed as serious when the Young Justice heroes come around. The episode, while the most lighthearted, definitely comes across as a response to the criticisms that people made when they wanted Teen Titans Go! to be serious and have that serious nature that the Teen Titans original show had and have that cross into the new series. This will be the second episode to be written by co-creator Michael Jelinek, apologies in advance if I'm getting that name incorrect. The first being Laundry Day, and technically one more than Aaron Horvath, the other co-creator of the show, with his writing credits being Legendary Sandwich and Parasite. And although multiple people have made multiple videos dissecting this episode, let it be known that this solved absolutely nothing. The people who didn't like the show continued to not like the show, and the people who liked the show still went on to like the show, and the people making the show would continue to make the show. This did absolutely nothing. July 28th, 2015, Teen Titans Go! would premiere The Return of Slade, an episode that was hyped up as the debut of a significant villain within the former Teen Titans show. To be reversed as Beast Boy and Cyborg would instead focus on a clown, in which Robin would insist that the clown is for kids. Once it sets in that the enjoyment they've gotten out of the clown is no longer a thing as they've now grown up and have gotten into other things. It's largely speculated and believed that the clown is a stand-in for the concept of children's entertainment. And this is another response towards the criticisms of the Titans being more serious, focused, and plot-driven, or dark, and not being that anymore. October 20th, 2015, Teen Titans Go! would premiere The Fourth Wall, also an episode written by the co-creators, an episode I did cover from Season 3, in which Control Freak would serve as a mouthpiece directly showing the main characters the other versions of themselves, which while initially in shock, would over the course of the episode develop an unapologetic tone towards Control Freak's criticisms, and embrace their sillier nature. April 21st, 2016, The Bottle Episode, or as they call it, Bottle Episode, an episode I covered and honestly ripped apart due to the nature of it largely being a clip show. However, it has moments between the clip shows that really caught my ire. Between it, the show would have Robin serve as the voice that would want a new adventure, or actually want to serve a purpose for the episode, to just do something and not be a YouTube compilation that counts as an episode, during an era where you can watch any episode of Teen Titans Go! on demand whenever you want. Also written by the co-creators, this episode didn't seem to be hated amongst the community, except myself because I'm an angry young man. However, I highlight it to display one of the early times the show would blame 
blatantly not do anything significant, even for Teen Titans Go standards. May 19th, 2016, Teen Titans Go would premiere Wally T, my least favorite episode of the series, at least so far, for real life out of story reasons. And yes, if you're keeping count, also written by the co-creators. The episode would feature the canon only fan of Teen Titans Go, at least up to that point, Wally T, a person that they would grovel to, not showing that unapologetic energy from episodes like The Fourth Wall or Let's Get Serious, but appear to care about fan opinions, and even portray Wally T as the conceptual shield of their satisfaction towards being titans. Wally T would be based off of a real person, even if not voiced by said person, who was organized to be a part of the show via the Make-A-Wish Foundation. To put it bluntly, the show shielded its criticisms both metaphorically and literally by hiding behind a child through the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which I still find to be a very disgusting practice, given that there is a legitimate discussion to be had, and shielding your very legitimate at this point criticisms towards a certain section of the audience behind a kid to garner sympathy is abhorrent, and everyone who is behind that should be ashamed. October 13th, 2016, Teen Titans Go! would premiere The Cape, another episode written by the creators, within season three, in which it basically was a dubbed edit of an original Teen Titans episode formatted to be of use with in Teen Titans Go. Although the episode doesn't respond to criticism, the episode would still be polarizing due to the fact that they used footage from the original show just to remix it with Teen Titans Go's brand of humor, which kind of poked at the serious nature of the show. And it didn't appeal to some, and it offended many. September 15th, 2017, while not a hater episode, as the wiki calls it, Control Freak would make an appearance in the season 4 episode Classic Titans to quote, prove his point about classic superhero cartoons by sending the Titans to a former version of Teen Titans Go. A minor episode in the grand scheme, but it solidifies that Control Freak is just a mouthpiece for certain thoughts about the show. Given that he's a neckbeard, you can tell exactly how they feel about people who don't like the show. Season 4 would have gone without addressing the section of their audience that is critical of them if it weren't for the self-indulgent 200th episode spectacular in which it premiered on November 24th, 2017, in which it dedicated a song to discussing how hard it is to produce an episode and that people just hate on the fact that they work night and day for kids. Conveniently leaving out that the deadlines imposed on you are based off of the company, not the critics or the fans or the kids, so the point you're making here is mute. It was a weird jab given that I don't think many people who made videos or discussions on the topic would say that the people on the inside didn't care for the show. Season 5 would have another Control Freak episode, The Chaff. Another hater episode premiering March 18th, 2019 that I'll just read the synopsis for. In an effort to get Teen Titans Go cancelled, Control Freak shows off some deleted scenes. Also written at the co-creators who at this point would have been doing episodes like this for years. Then, November 14, 2020, the year after the last month when recording this, Teen Titans Go! in its sixth season would release Toddler Titans. Yay! Another Control Freak episode in which the summary, according to the wiki, is, quote, Control Freak thinks the Titans' humor is too juvenile for their time slot, so he ages them down to a preschool show. For the past five to six years, the show has consistently released episodes that poke at the criticisms, respond to the criticisms, jokes at the notions of the criticisms, and owns it. The movie largely is based around owning the criticism that they are silly and incompetent in comparison to other heroes, including their former selves. At least, if you're going to acknowledge that a video on the Teen Titans Go! critic callout episodes is redundant, notice that the creators have been largely responsible for keeping up the format of these episodes for over five years, and that's why I'm apathetic because this is just a sub-genre of the show, particularly when ideas are running out. At one point, it was bad, but now it's just bizarre. It's embarrassing, but interesting. Now understand that given the title, this episode is in question, Teen Titans War should be the focus, but with this new context of knowing that they've been doing this for years, everything should make sense as to why it's incredibly hard to be upset at the show in the way that it's portrayed, at least to me. So let's actually begin. Um, it's not supposed to be charming, it's supposed to be cool! Around the time of the original video of the Thundercats Roar promo video, we would see the intro sequence played out, amongst some promotional animation showing some of the work behind it. There was a lot of backlash given that there was no additional material to look at other than this video. I think it's more than fair to say that the backlash towards Thundercats Roar at the time was excessive. However, I'll do what Teen Titans Go! is allergic to, discuss the nuance of why this came to be. As a non-Thundercats Roar fan, the three 
reasons I would give as to what caused the backlash are simple. The first being the art style. If you were to watch the original Thundercats or even the 2011 reboot, the designs are more realistic and detailed than their war counterparts. Like with Teen Titans Go, and I'm pretty sure you can make a case for Ben 10 and the Powerpuff Girls, there seemed to be somewhat of a simplification of the style, which is perfectly legitimate and I don't want to make it seem like I have a problem with that. While it is 100% true that you cannot base the writing of the show or the quality of the entire show or any single episode based off of the promo video, it's perfectly legitimate to say that you can be turned away from watching the show if you don't like the art style. Animation is a visual medium and a big portion of why you may like a show comes from the visual elements. The art style, the animation, the designs, all of these things are on display within the promo video. Mind you, the video designed to drum up interest early before showing the final product. Now while you could make the perfectly okay argument to go, well, maybe you should still watch the first few episodes to see if you really like it or not, that's a suggestion, that's not an obligation. We aren't robots, and if you're watching me on YouTube, this may be hyperbolic, but I guarantee not a single person who is watching this video here has watched every single video that YouTube has suggested to them. Maybe you didn't want to watch a video because of the creator. Maybe it was a thumbnail. Maybe it was a title. Maybe another video looked more interesting. Maybe you just didn't feel like it. No matter the reason, it would be ridiculous if people were to bring the logic that you have to watch at least some of a video you choose not to watch just because you determined based off of the creator or the thumbnail or whatever that you weren't interested in it. And guess what? Considering that Teen Titans Go really enjoys telling me that they market to kids as the oldest brother of three, Kids are way pickier. We like to pretend that kids will watch anything due to things such as Spider-Man and Elsa videos that were around. And that is an argument to be made, but life is great. Children can be just as picky as they are completely open-minded and given the scenario, there's a lot of children who watch Cartoon Network who know of Thundercats Roar, who simply chose not to watch it for a variety of reasons. That's perfectly legitimate in the same way that it's legitimate that former fans or new or older fans may not choose to watch it. The second reason is credibility. As much as Cartoon Network may not like to admit it, it's not the greatest network to turn to when it comes to the success and subjective quality of reboots and what we would call the modern times. It had three that were the poster child of what people considered bad reboots. Teen Titans Go, The Pop of Girls, and Ben 10, now Thundercats Roar. Now regardless of what you think of these shows, and I consider one and a half of those shows to be actually good, if you're already in the mindset that the reboots that Cartoon Network is putting out is not good, and this one bears a striking resemblance to the Teen Titans Go style, which if you already think it's bad, it's logical that you would believe that you wouldn't like this one. Going back to the YouTube analogy, if you don't like YouTubers A videos, and you decide not to watch YouTuber A anymore, that's perfectly legitimate to do so. You wouldn't argue that you have to give the next video and all of the future YouTuber A's videos an open mind if you already had a bad experience with the others. You can't predict exactly if you would like it or not, but you can guess that if the content hasn't changed, you probably won't like what comes in the future. And the third one, and the most damning, is mob mentality. Reboot culture on the internet can be very polarizing. On one hand, you have cases such as the Ren and Stimpy reboot being scrapped due to a major backlash. And on the other hand, you have people who completely trashed the entire Cartoon Network channel due to two or three reboots occupying the space, despite there being multiple original shows going on around the time. It can be great, but also very stupid, depending on the show, depending on the person, depending on the situation at hand, I guess. On the whole, it's largely unproductive and sometimes maliciously speculative. I'm sure there's a lot of people who remember how hated Thundercats War was with certain people, and if this episode made the distinction that they're focusing on the lowest hanging fruit, there wouldn't be an issue. However, it didn't. He took one of the greatest action cartoons of all time and turned it into a comedy? I am outraged! We all outraged! <laughs> One of the most damning things about this episode is the fact that we are to believe that the Titans minus Starfire is a Thundercats fan this entire time, through five seasons. Not one mention of them being a Thundercats war fan before that. If this is meant to poke fun at the fact that many people are outraged but were never diehard fans, whatever. But I don't believe the Titans are fans, and thus the entire premise of this episode falls apart. They wouldn't be characters here, but more so mouthpieces, and I don't know if it's mouthpieces for the writers, the general staff, the creators, or Cartoon Network as a whole. Starfire plays the lone Titan who has general sense, usually they delegate this role to Robin, and Starfire suggests that maybe they should look at the episode before hating the entire thing and letting it ruin their day. 
Robin has a running joke that the reason he and the Titans are upset is because someone quote, made a cartoon not exactly how they wanted it to be. This falls apart when you realize that the fifth season of Samurai Jack was held in high regards and no one can say it's exactly how they wanted it to be. Animaniacs, a new show, a reboot that people seem to enjoy. I'm pretty sure it's not exactly how people wanted it to be. It seems to be rather simple, people want good entertainment. There's always going to be a selection of people who don't like a new thing regardless of how good it is. In fact, let me tell you about myself. I am an avid Sly Cooper fan. I love Sly Cooper games. I played 1, 2, and 3. I don't want to play Thieves in Time because it has a different look, it was made by a different company, and it just doesn't have the same feel that I'm looking for. Regardless of if the game is good, it just doesn't have that feel and aesthetic that I look forward to with the original three games. So my point is, there's always going to be a selection of people who don't like a thing, but there's going to be a selection of people who give it a try. A lot of people gave Thieves in Time a try, and a lot of people like Thieves in Time. And that's the section that you conveniently decided not to show an episode to, but rather an episode that exaggerates a point that no one is making. I believe you will all find it as wonderful as I do. Yeah. I've seen enough! <laughs> what were we thinking getting this garbage a second chance? But Jay, you can't show every argument within an 11 minute episode. You have to make sure that the children are able to understand it and simplification can be needed to make something stand out more. I agree. But when your argument always goes after the lowest common denominator, the irrational haters that freak out at everything and think they know what's best for everyone else with your big microphone, you're going to set a narrative that may not be true, especially when you only decide to respond in 11 minute indirect implicative shots. It's bound to be vague because you can never be direct, because at the end of the day you're still making a cartoon, not a commentary video. In fact, you're taking advantage of the ambiguity just to sweep the nuance of the criticisms under the rug. And that's not gonna fly by my watch. If that's what you decide to do on your platform, allow me to completely rip this apart on mine. Please friends, how can you get this so worked up and down over the children's show? Oh, so just because it's for kids means it doesn't have to be any good? Kids are a lot smarter than you give them credit for. Borrowing this point from another reviewer, these critic callout videos have such a weird audience. You have to not like the show, but like it enough to watch, but not be a kid, but also know enough about the behind the scenes, which goes against them saying that Teen Titans Go is for kids. It's super confusing. On one hand, you're for kids, and on the other hand, you're clearly not responding to kids. So when you make episodes like this and take time out of the overworked and underpaid animators time, remember that in return, what you're telling me is that I should feel a certain way that these staff members work tirelessly to respond to a critics who aren't kids via a show that's for kids? You see how that's a little weird on your end? Also, just a note, they spent the first four minutes being angry. Finally, they switched to another aspect, the dreaded petition. I want to note that I always found a large number of animation petitions to be rather silly. It always suffered from something like a low count, which this episode pokes fun at, or some lofty goal like end Spongebob or something that has bad optics, like revive this show that the creator doesn't really want to work on anymore. Isn't it great how they chose to focus on the petition when that's not really what people care about? Since I have no ties to Cartoon Network, let me be the first to tell you that it's the attacks directly to the writers and staff and the death threats that they care about. I don't condone it from my audience, if you do this you're an absolute idiot and the exact people depicted here. And I do think when you think about this entire thing, the staff's biggest offense is just making a bad kid show. That's it's not really major in the grand scheme of things. However, low blow incoming, the reason why they didn't focus on this, speculating of course, is because they don't want to encourage it or validate it in an animated form, but they will validate and indirectly encourage petitions with that same logic. I think this segment was fine, if not what were to follow. As soon as they realize the petition, while heard from the company, is a low amount and thus they cannot follow through with it, they go into the Thundercats war world. Classic. Do not wish to interrupt the viewing pleasure, but you all seem to be enjoying the Thundercats roar. Now, if there were ever a point within this review where I actually would get annoyed, it would be here, and it's not for what you think. 
If the show wants to take creative liberties in portraying the criticisms of Thundercats War, do that, whatever you want. If the show wants to pretend that these characters are not the mouthpiece of the argument they wouldn't dare say themselves, go ahead, it's your right, I guess. If you even want to portray the argument incorrectly, that's something that you are technically allowed to do, just with the criticism that will come after, like in this video. However, it's absolutely hypocritical and disgusting to show them enjoying the show like it's some new revelation. And know what you're thinking. You're thinking that I'm crazy for thinking that the one time that they actually enjoy themselves shouldn't be the time to get upset. But I'm crazy for other reasons, and this is not it. This is the core problem with Teen Titans Go. You spend hours and hours of your time animating, drawing, writing, and improving episodes that basically tell your audience to calm down, remember that this is for kids, and to not take things seriously. Yet you make these episodes, which are not for kids, designed by nature to rile up people, and that you're taking some of these criticisms seriously, or you wouldn't continuously spring up the same points every single year. For five years, the same two people. You guys are clearly affected by this, and it's not even a tiny thing. You made a movie off of the reputation of how your characters are perceived. A reasonable person would just want to have good entertainment. Good entertainment could just be them having fun. You know what's a good example of the Titans being themselves but still having fun along the way? Another crossover, TTG versus PPG. In that crossover, you had fun. You didn't spend a single second poking fun at the audience. In fact, you put the audience in the Titan's shoes in a sense, playing off the way that some people didn't take the reboot seriously. You thought of the audience first and not yourselves. It was a good crossover because they had fun and you put the audience first. This isn't a good crossover because you clearly put yourselves before the kids to give a watered down response. And no one had fun. Starfire couldn't have fun because her friends are being irrational, and the other Titans weren't having fun because they were straw man to play the typical critic. In short, if I were to give a direct response back to the crew, it'd be to practice what you preach. We would never hurt them, Orange Lady, but perhaps in the future they can put their energy into addressing something more important. We could have had an incredible crossover with action and comedy. It could have been super silly, but fun for everyone involved. It could have had references. In fact, it could have poked fun at some of this, but just in tiny doses. That would have shown people that you can enjoy both, and you can enjoy the sentiment that a formerly darker, more serious show can be wacky and enjoyable still. The episode would end with the original Thundercats giving their endorsement. I get that in a sense this serves as a layered endorsement out of the episode, but you've already poisoned the well. I already think this episode is in bad faith. My recommendation? Watch Roar. Watch the original. Watch the 2011 version. But whatever you do, save yourself the effort. Don't watch these episodes. They clearly only mean to talk to people who critique the show in a negative light. So if that isn't you, why watch this? Why watch any of these episodes? Why watch any of the future episodes? You know at this point that someone on YouTube, like myself, will cover it. So what's the point of watching any of it? Teen Titans Go will decrease in ratings, and the legacy of the show will be remembered as that other show next to Giants, like Adventure Time, Gumball, Regular Show, Seaving Universe, OKKO, OK maybe even Craig of the Creek, and other shows that didn't need a previous legacy in order to build their name. If you're worried about a YouTube commentator watering down the points of the episode to fit their own narrative, well I must say, hindsight is 2020. My voice is shot, but thank you so much for watching, thank you so much to the team who helped me push to work on this, and as always, thank you so much for your time. Take care. Alpha out.